Hello and welcome to episode 21 of A DM's Guide to the Tomb of Annihilation. On today's episode we're going to look at 68, The Hall of Decay, and 69, The Mechanist Chain. And quickly before we begin this episode, we do have a winner from the previous episode with the episode 20 giveaway of Curse of Strad. You know who you are, you can jump right in. And again, if you like this content, remember to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, there's a Patreon link in the description below. So let's now look at 68, The Hall of Decay. 68 Hall of Decay. Graven images of rotting corpses decorate this hall, and the floor is littered with tarnished coins, pieces of armour, broken shields and axe heads, and other bits of scrap metal. The main thing with this room is that all non-magical objects made of cloth, leather, wood or metal that enter this corridor instantly decay or corrode, to the point of being useless and worthless. Clothing armour falls apart, shields and weapons become brittle and ineffective, and so forth. So as your characters access this room, I would say that this magical effect will take place when they descend the staircase right here. The only way to stop it is by going over to this archway, which I'll explain right now. This yawning archway has a keystone adorned with an iron bull skull, which bites down on an ivory ring. If your characters cast Detect Magic or similar effect, it reveals an aura of necromancy, emulating from the ivory ring. If the ring is yanked from the skull's jaws, it disintegrates and the destructive effect ends. So the main thing I've noticed is that when your characters come in here, they're most likely going to have magical armour. However, some may not. So this will cause a massive effect. If your character's armour do get destroyed, remember to sort ACs and all non-magical weapons will be destroyed. Also, it'll be very interesting to see if anyone will actually pull this ring to stop the effect. The most awful way of doing this room would be have one player walk in and sacrifice themselves. Perhaps they can do a mage hand. So you have approximately 85 feet, you can perhaps pull this from a distance. From my experience playing this, the characters walked straight in and one character lost everything. However, they had backup equipment because they went from room to room and they were rather prepared for this room. If they go south, this will lead into the final level, level 6 of the Tomb of the Nine Gods. So let's continue through and look through here. What's so interesting about this room? 69 Mechanist Chain. Hot wind tinged with the smell of burning oil blows down a 40 foot diameter vertical shaft. Stone balconies protrude from the walls on opposite sides of this expanse. With the west balcony 15 feet higher than the east one, two thick chains rattle in the gulf between the balconies. One ascending 200 feet before disappearing into a cloudy vortex, lit by arcs of purple lightning. The other wrapping around in an enormous metal gear, floating 100 feet below. Another 100 feet below the gear, a second vortex rages. So as you see this room on your map, it's quite hard to figure out. So you might not have seen this for a while, but I'm going to give you a quick representation with one of my fantastic drawings. So you can see the scale. There's a standard token here, so you can see that this is a very, very tall room. So it's 200 feet above and 200 feet below. Your characters here have a balcony that's 15 feet below the west one. Your characters can fly across, but jumping across this would be very, very difficult. Below you can see there is a vortex, and above is a vortex. These vortex, they would lead to the plane of Mechanus. And this is how all the different traps and the soulmonger gets its energy from. And if your characters were high enough level, they could disable this chain and prevent the soulmonger from working. So the whole point of this room is this is the infernal engine that drives all the machinery. Would your characters know this? When your characters come in here and they've got proficiency in their arcana skill, they can make an arcana check. And if the DC 10, they know that the planar vortexes are incredibly dangerous. No one can expect to enter a vortex and survive. If it's a DC 15, the chain is called the Mechanist Chain. Such chains are crafted by Modrons and used in conjunction with other machinery to keep the plane of Mechanist in order. We did talk about Mechanist in the previous episode, but all you need to know is Mechanist is a world that's all about complete order and it's full of clockwork machinery. And if your characters are really smart and they have a DC of 20, they know that the Mechanist Chain would be repurposed for the tomb and one chain would be enough to keep the tomb's traps and other mechanisms in working order. And if they're super super smart they know that destroying a mechanist chain requires casting three wish spells if they pass a DC 25. And if your characters are intelligent they know that you have to be a very very high level wizard to cast a wish spell. And they know that Serac commands this tomb. So the main thing you need to realise is if Serac can create this chain and take it from Mechanist a separate plane, you need to realise that he has the potential to cast 
the wish spell is an incredibly strong wizard. And that's when alarm bells should be going because they should be fearing a wizard of the strength. So what we need to know is that if a character falls in this void, they are dead. They are ripped apart and spread across the multiverse. A hundred feet below this balcony here, there's an enormous gear. However, it doesn't state how big this is. So I would assume that perhaps because this is a radius of 35 to 40 feet, this could be 5 feet to 10 feet large. You have a chain that comes from top to bottom. This chain is constantly moving. So if a character was to jump and grab this chain right here, they would go up 50 foot in a turn. And again, if they go through this vortex at the top, they also would disappear forever. And because of the Tomb Annihilation, things don't always go as planned. And what happens when your characters enter this room for the first time? As your characters enter this room, they're going to be met by Modrons. A rip forms in the vortex high above. Nine cube-shaped creatures with wings and short bows fly through. They're quickly followed by a large crystal decahedron that holds a weird starfish-shaped creature. A pentadrone leads a squad of nine quadrones through the upper planar vortex. And the main thing with this is that these modrons can get through, but they know they can't come back out. And that means they're going to fight to the death. So let's have a look at a quadrone and a pentadrone. So quadrones, what we know from the monster manual, is that they're shoot combatants and they serve as artillery and field officers in the regiments of the Modron's armies. And with the Pentadrone, they oversee mechanist workers, populace, and they can improvise to a response to a new situation. So these are clockwork machines. The main thing we need to realise is this Pentadrone cannot fly. This large crystal dehedron is effectively a spaceship. So with the decahedron, it is a ten-sided shape. Doesn't give you much details about the spaceship, except that it can fit this pentadrone. It has the ability to open up a window. The decahedron spaceship has an AC of 16, 50 hit points, and it's immune to poison damage and resistance to piercing slashing, and is vulnerable to bludgeoning and thunder damage. And if it reduces your hit points, the crystal explodes, and the pentadrone is going to fly through the air. And it's going to fall, and it's going to be destroyed by the vortex below. When it's inside this crystal decahedron, it can fly at 30 feet and it can hover while inside. If a character do have the mad idea of teleporting inside this machine, such as Misty Step and Dimension Door, it can fight as normal. So the interesting thing here is the Pentadrone does not have a ranged attack, except from the powerless gas. So it fires a 30 foot cone of gas. Each creature in the area must succeed in a DC 11 constituting saving throw or be paralyzed for one minute. And because you are fighting in this vertical plane. So let's see your characters are fighting here and they're paralyzed, they're most likely going to fall to their death. It's a very, very nasty ability. However, 200 feet from the platform, so you have at least two or three turns before this machine will get close to your characters. And with a squad of nine quadrones, they have a ranged attack so they can use a short bow. Quadrone has an armor class of 16, which is relatively low, low hit points of 22. Its stats are very basic. Is high status dex, which is a 14. However, it does have a very unique multi attack. So, with its short bow, it can do four short bow attacks. So, these quad drones are going to fire massive volleys. And since you do have nine quad drones, nine times four, it means that they're going to do 36 short bow attacks. However, it's only a plus four to hit, so they might get hit a couple times, but it is a mass amount of attacks. One thing to do, watch out for is it does have a range of 80 feet, so hopefully your characters could probably kill them before they get close. And because they are flying through the air, any ability that would stop them flying would mean they would fall and they would be destroyed from the vortex below. And as I was talking about the Pentadrone before, it has AC of 16, it has hit points of 32, and the main thing is it has 5 arms, so when it attacks in close combat, it's going to do five arm attacks. So I've done a brief ex explanation of what these creatures can do and the shape of the room. So I'll explain what happened when my players did this encounter. Our sorcerer just learned a new spell. They just had a long rest prior to this encounter, which makes this even more interesting. And the spell the sorcerer learned is called Circle of Death. So as soon as she's seen these creatures in the air, she casts this spell. Circle of Death, sex level. A sphere of negative energy ripples into a 60 foot radius sphere from a point within range. Each creature in that area must make a constituting saving throw or they take 8d6 necrotic damage on a failed save or half as much than a successful one. When I read this, this is the first time me reading this spell in the campaign. 
I looked at it and I was like, well, I can't really do much. It doesn't look as good as Fireball, which is level 3. But one thing I didn't realise was it's a 60 foot radius sphere. The sorcerer placed it right here and engulfed every enemy in this attack. Quadrone has 22 hit points. The Pentadrone has 32. Their con is not that large. Every Quadrone, every Pentadrone failed their constitution saving throw. And she rolled 32 points of necrotic damage. So she successfully killed every single creature in this encounter before it began. So as soon as my player characters seen these enemies flying through the space, she's a circle of death and that's the encounter finished like that. With you guys, how did you guys get on? Did anyone die to this encounter? Did anyone fall in the vortex? I'm very, very curious to see how you got on. So before I forget, just remember that you can quite happily fly across this. If you are to fall, you can land in the floating gear 100 feet below with a successful DC 10 dexterity save. However, they will take falling damage as normal. A character can jump from chain to chain. You must make two successful DC 10 strength athletics checks. And if they fail this, they can fall in this gear here with a successful dexterity check, or they'll fall to their death down here. So again guys, thank you very much for watching, and in the next episode we're going to go across this hallway, we're going to look at this room right here, 70 Armillary Sphere, and we're finally going to go down to level 6, the final level of the Tomb of Annihilation. So again, thanks for watching, and again if you did enjoy this content, remember to like and subscribe, and I feel generous the Patreon link below, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao!